I was really achy. I was running a high fever. Within a matter of seconds, there was more doctors and nurses in there than, than you can count. At first, the doctors didn't know what was wrong with me exactly, and they ran all these tests. And we noticed she couldn't breathe anymore. So it's how we ended up in the ICU. I just went in for a little 15 minute procedure to drain my kidney. When they put the tube in, and they pulled it out, infection got in his bloodstream and it's all over. I was a very sick man that a good chance I wasn't gonna make it. The way they decided to do things was really, really fast. His life was depending on those decisions. When a patient develops sepsis, it can be very frightening. Sepsis is a potentially life-threatening emergency. While it's normal for the body to respond to infection, sepsis can lead to a catastrophic overreaction, causing your body to go into multiple organ failure, shock, and death, especially if sepsis is not recognized and treated early. MD Anderson's goal and the goal of all healthcare providers is to keep our patients safe from the threat of sepsis, which can be especially dangerous if your immune system is depressed, such as in cancer patients. I've never heard of the word septis or septic shock or anything like that. The doctors never, never used the word sepsis. Miguel is uh, our only son. He had a very severe inflammatory reaction in his bowel. It's like a month ago, I didn't know that sepsis was uh, what ever happened to him. Normally, when there's an infection in a specific body part or tissue, the body will fight the infection in the immediate area. The typical signs of this local inflammation are increased temperature, redness, pain, and swelling around the site of the infection. I had noticed where the, the entry was at, where the actual central venous catheter line went into her chest, was red and irritated looking the last time she had cleaned it and changed her bandage. I noticed that it didn't look right to me. Sepsis develops when the infection overwhelms the body's local defense mechanisms, and the resulting germs and toxins spread through the circulatory system, causing an uncontrolled inflammatory response. This can happen regardless of your age, ethnicity, or gender. It can happen to anyone. We could see maybe white cell counts going up. We saw uh, one level called C-reactive protein, okay, that uh, when you have an inflammatory response, it goes up to. I had some sort of rash and they didn't know it was wrong and there was a lot of other stuff going wrong with my vitals, so they ran tests. Once the patient's organs start to deteriorate and blood pressure drops, you can develop septic shock. The best way to treat it is to recognize sepsis as early as possible or try to prevent it altogether. I actually wish that I would have probably just called ambulance because, you know, I don't know that that 12 hours made that big of a difference, but it could have, you know, it could have made a big difference. The root of most cases of sepsis is infection, so preventing infection is the best way to prevent sepsis. Most cancer treatments, like chemotherapy or stem cell transplant, can weaken the immune system, opening the door to illness. Anyone whose immune system is weak is more susceptible to sepsis. Talk to your doctor if you are at increased risk. Things like good general hygiene, washing your hands, getting vaccines when appropriate, and avoiding the misuse of antibiotics, all are things that can help prevent illness. Make sure and keep your eyes out for any type of redness, any type of irritation, um, any type of drainage. Anything that doesn't appear to be right, it may not go away. I would advise people to always be educated and do their own research and not be afraid to ask the doctors a lot of questions. Prevention of sepsis is dependent on being aware of this disorder, being vigilant about the potential signs and symptoms, and getting proper attention as soon as possible if infection is suspected. You should take it seriously. Like if you think it might be happening, don't blow it off. Just. You should pay attention to things. Early detection and appropriate intervention can significantly increase a patient's chances of surviving sepsis. 
If you're at home and you begin to feel extremely ill or show any of the following symptoms, you should suspect sepsis. Weakness, loss of appetite, fever and chills, confusion and lethargy, thirst, signs of worsening organ function such as difficult or rapid breathing, rapid heart rate, low blood pressure or low urine output. If you have these symptoms, go to the emergency room. You may need immediate medical attention in a hospital with an intensive care unit. When sepsis occurs, every minute counts. The longer it takes to start appropriate treatment and achieve stabilization, the lower the chance of survival. A lot of stuff can happen when your immune system is very low and then even afterwards. So if something happens that seems like an infection, I would advise people to go see a doctor because you know you've got a history of something like this. So don't ignore things. So part of the small bowel and the large bowel were removed in a very, very severe and um, dangerous surgery. He spent like four months in ICU. Yeah. Her blood pressure was, had dropped, couldn't get it up, couldn't get it stable. So they sent her to ICU. They put me on all kind of antibiotics. I had like 20-something IVs in me at one time. The ER doctor pulled me on the side and talked to him and he said, his, he's going into multi-organ failure. We want to get him on life support and get dialysis going. It's like when you're stuck in a traffic jam, you feel trapped and you have no other way out and you're not in control anymore. And you just, I just could not believe that was going on. Severe sepsis and septic shock are potentially life-threatening with an extremely high death rate of 30 to 60%. That's a pretty scary number. It's, it's really, it really puts a, an impact on how important it is to not ignore any signs or symptoms or signals or anything. Because, you know, by waiting, it could be, it could be too late. I came to a turning point, I think, probably about a little over a week and about a week and a half in. Then they started weaning him off the ventilator, and he was holding that fine, and a lot of the swelling had started going down. Yeah, it's very scary. I'm lucky to be here today. When I started to get better from the pneumonia and the sepsis and everything else on top, they woke me up and I didn't know that it happened at first, but then they told me. We were really happy and we could watch movies and she could play her video games she loves so much. He's having a normal life, that's what we want to. That he can play the whole day. <laughs> that's the only thing. It's a basic thing. 